What's up, you beautiful bastards? Hope you're having a fantastic Monday. Welcome back to The Philip DeFranco Show and a quick note for today's show. On today's video, I have removed all advertising. I have rescheduled a sponsor that was originally scheduled today and that's because I don't want to talk about a story today and have it in any way seem like I'm exploiting the situation. And I know a lot of you, especially in these more trying times for YouTubers are gonna say, no, keep the ads on. But because the situation deals with children and I know that one of the arguments is going to be you're trying to exploit my children, I need to pull the advertising for this video because the story is far more important. So that that said, let's jump into it. And so that first story we're gonna talk about today is about a family that has garnered a lot of negative attention in the past week. And that's a family that's been sharing their lives on a YouTube channel by the name of Daddy of Five. And it's a mixture of a family channel and also a prank channel, although unlike a lot of the family prank channels, they also prank the kids. But not in like the Jimmy Kimmel, we ate all your candy during Halloween kind of prank. And the reason they've been receiving all this attention the past week is they put out a video called Invisible Ink Prank Epic Freakout. And the mom on the channel explains the prank in the beginning. We have invisible ink, we're going to pour it all all over our, one of our son's floors, and then we're gonna act like we think one of our kids did it, and that's the prank. She even seems pretty sweet in the beginning. Hey guys, <laughs> so. I got a prank for Cody. And then once the prank begins, the tone changes. Oh, no, get your fucking ass up here! What the fuck? Did what did you do? What the fuck? I didn't do that. What the hell is that? I didn't do that. You tell me what you did. I swear to God, I didn't do that. Cody. Cody! I can't do it! You're, you're taking it! the fucking lion again! You are gonna lose your allowance and everything! We didn't do this! Yes, you did! Stop. Yes, you did! It's just a prank, bruh! <laughs> and so there was a range of anger. Some people saying this is outright abuse of your children. Others saying this is not abuse, but these are asshole parents that are exploiting their children for money and hurting them emotionally. And then it also appears that they have a dedicated audience that are completely fine with this, which is also why I expect this video to be one of my most disliked in the past month. Now in response to all of this outrage, the family made a video called Blocking All the Haters. It's a 21 plus minute video, but to summarize it, there's no apology. And they say that all the hate's just coming from bored haters. They say the children are and have never been abuse are really pissed off about this video because we're yelling and the kids are crying and everything like that and apparently it's upsetting a lot of people this video I mean I, I it's just a prank bro <laughs> pretty much sums it up yeah well a lot of people apparently don't get it a lot of people don't see the humor in it Can I have your attention for a minute, please? Yeah. Was anybody traumatized? No! Oh. Well, we I don't even know what that word means, but yes, no. I was, <laughs> Mom. I was. No. Are you guys okay? And most of their defense is people just don't understand our family, we're goofy, we mess with each other. The kids chime in that the only reason people are doing this is because they're jealous. Not fans, it's haters. There's people out there, right? They're just jealous. Whatever they are. Then the mom flips it on the people that are angry and says that you're actually the problem. To all you haters, you are the ones that give our children drama. Look, not Exactly. Not. You are the one that cause us problems. You are the one that try to embarrass us and embarrass them. You are the one that's ruined our life. Well, okay, Emma, that's a little too far. Criticisms and concern for your children are not hate. I hope people can understand that. She also then goes on to explain to the people saying that they're going to call Child Protective Services that they've already been investigated. We have been investigated already for the YouTube channel. Nothing was found. Then the dad tries to compare what he does to massive YouTuber Roman Atwood. Look, other people do the same thing, but you don't go to their channel that's and do the same thing. Yeah, didn't Roman Atwood do a prank where he Pranked his girlfriend and he dropped the baby, he killed it or something. And after I break down the situation, I'm going to explain why I think that is not an accurate comparison, along with several other points I want to make, but we'll continue. And one of the kids chimes in with, at least you're not beating us. At least you're not beating us like most parents. And so ultimately, that's where the situation is right now. Now to kind of work backwards, one, at least you don't beat us like other parents, that is a pretty low bar to set. Also, as someone that was abused in their childhood, there are multiple ways to abuse your kids. There's there's mentally and there's physically. Also, the Roman Atwood comparison, most people who've watched this channel for a long time know that I'm not a massive fan, although that had more to do with faking pranks and either he or his MCN at the time flagging my video and trying to get it removed. But to Roman Atwood's defense, he doesn't really mess with his kids like this. Most pranks are just on other adults, and then whether what's real or not, you get 
can you can debate that separately. I don't want to get sidetracked with that. And to the notion that everyone that's angry about this, they're just haters, that's that's silly. The more I dove into this channel's history, the more concerned I became. Once again, with it being a prank channel, there's a lot of times where you don't know what's real. Is it fake? But a lot of the reactions from the kids seem legitimate. Is the monetization of acting like your home was broken into, dressing one of your kids like an intruder, and having dad come down the stairs with a gun? <laughs> And while they do mess with the kids, a lot of the time it seems directed towards one specific kid, and that is Cody. Well, in the family video where they defended themselves, they said, you know, the kids get to decide if the video goes up. They also acknowledge that they have so much cool stuff thanks to having a YouTube channel. So by getting stuff, they're incentivized to allow the parents to upload these videos. Even though the little kid Cody is very obviously not a fan of this. I don't think you're moving. <laughs> <laughs> what is even happening? I can't move! <laughs> You I obviously you did it. it. You are. Why you in here, Jake? Oh, stop! 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 Jake! It's just a prank. So you all made me go th all through all this just for a stupid prank. Yeah. I'm tired of this. You wanna go outside and play? No. I do. You wanna go outside and play? I want everybody to leave me alone. I just wanna be left alone so I can calm down. There's more yelling at Cody. The dad seems to egg the kids on for better content, which sometimes results in Cody getting hit. Ow. Stop! And if we look past the screaming and cursing at the kids, there's also the physical element. Not just between some of the kids, which people would say, oh, you know, that's just families. In a video they called Tablet Destruction Prank, at one point the dad pushes Cody. That sends him face first into a bookshelf, and then we see later in the video his pillow is covered with blood. He has a bloody nose not only because his dad decided to make this video, but because he pushed him. Although the father's defense is that it wasn't actually blood, it was red ink. And his nose isn't bleeding, but that's a scab. Which, even if I gave him the benefit of doubt, you still pushed your kid face first into a shelf. Hey! Even if the kid didn't bleed, a lot of people argue that it still counts. He makes it clear time and time again that he does not want to be filmed. And to that, the dad says, Go and take the camera with you. No! I gotta vlog my life. You know that. That's insane to me. And if you look into the comments, not only are there people cheering it on, they're asking, does Cody have anger issues? If your life involved your family messing with you constantly, constantly making you the butt of jokes, you'd probably get a little defensive too. They poke and prod and mess with this kid and then they yell at him for being angry. They blame him for being angry, but they're the ones instigating it for money. And I have to say, ultimately, I'm disgusted by this. I don't know what the next step is. I want it to turn out that all of this is fake, that this kid doesn't actually have to deal with this in his everyday life. Now, is this child abuse? I would leave that up to Child Protective Services. If they've really been called and Child Protective Services said, you know, they, they did nothing wrong, the pushing, the hitting, the screaming, the putting the kids in this situation, egging them on, if they, if they saw all that. <laughs> I've seen all the screaming, the other things that I would personally label emotional abuse. That is a CPS issue, and if they're already investigating, hopefully they've seen that footage. And to the argument that the kids are saying, we were fine with this, we're okay, we're not being abused. Once again, someone who was abused emotionally and physically as a child, you don't want to turn on your parent. There's also a chance that these kids don't realize they shouldn't be treated like this. We already know the low bar of what they consider abuse. At least you're not beating us like most parents. Stop it! Go and take the camera with you. No! Plus, if they just keep going along with what mom and dad are doing, then they keep getting cool stuff. They're incentivized. But that said, I would love to know your opinion here. Are people overreacting or is this a serious issue? And I ask this question because if you've watched me for a while, you know when it's, if it comes to stories about kids potentially being abused, I, I am very biased. I tried to explain the story as evenly as possible in the beginning, but it, it's impossible for me to hide the fact that if, if you treat a child like this, I hate you. And while the kids themselves either really or publicly will say that they don't think they're being abused, I, I am personally concerned for these kids, but I need to know, I need to know what other people think because stories like this do make me emotional. And then let's talk about the insane situation out of Cleveland this weekend. You may have already seen it in the news or you saw me talking about it yesterday, mainly because I was trying to make sure people were careful. Get home, get to a safe space, lock the door, and that's because police were searching for a man who live streamed saying that he killed 12, 13 plus people. A man who also uploaded a video of him just finding a person walking on the street and shooting them in the head. And while in his live stream in the video he uploaded, he said he killed 15 people. Police 
police have right now only confirmed one. Now in stories like this, I often don't show the face of the person behind the crime, but because there is an active manhunt for this person, and police will most likely need help to get this man. This is Steve Stevens. He's the man who shot and killed Robert Godwin Sr., a 74 year old man who was just walking home. Now there is video of this happening still online. I will 100% not link to this. And I also ask people, please stop sharing this video. You know who did it? There is no one contesting this. There's no one trying to stop the police from getting this guy. If you watch a video, you're not a horrible person, but just please do not share. This is the worst moment in a family's life. Please show this man and his family at least that respect. Now, as far as why Steve Stevens said that he did this, he said that he did this because his mom and his ex wouldn't talk to him. Even saying to Godwin Sr. before he pulled the trigger that she's the reason this is about to happen to you. Now, updates to this story that happened yesterday. At a press conference this morning, the Cleveland police chief said that they do not know where he is. And while police chief Calvin Williams did confirm that police did make contact with Stephen once via cell phone, their attempt to get Stevens to turn himself in was unsuccessful. Also, when asked if there was any validity to the people sharing the story that his cell phone had been pinged in Pennsylvania, Williams responded, we don't know where he's at. So once again, whether you are in Cleveland or really, he could be anywhere at this point. This is the last known vehicle that he was in. This is what he looks like right now. If you see him, please understand that he is dangerous. Call police and get to a safe place. Also, quick side notes to this story. If you see a GoFundMe for Mr. Godwin and his family, they have asked you do not contribute. Chief Williams, who was speaking on behalf of the family, said that they saw that a lot of people had made GoFundMes and some of them were fake, and he urged people to not contribute to the fundraising at this time. Also, this story has brought up the conversations you'd expect, and also some new ones. The ones you'd expect, people are arguing about gun control, background checks, mental health in relation to guns, but also there's been a lot of discussion about social media's involvement in crime like this. We're living in a time now where the barrier for entry to live stream or share what you do is at an all time low. And so there's a lot of cool stuff, but we're seeing more and more there are stories of people killing themselves on live streams or perpetrating crimes on live streams or doing it and then uploading it. And to that point, that's why we are talking about this story. And also we have this new in your face nature of viral crimes. While only one person has been killed, he claimed that he killed far more. This was in no way the only shooting crime. Over Easter weekend, just in Philadelphia, 20 were shot, four were killed. In Chicago, over 40 shot, two killed. But not many people are talking about that, especially in a specific individual nature. We're talking about this because it is so horrific, it is so outlandish, and it does spark up the conversation. If people start doing this more and more, are we going to have more and more of a copycat problem? No, I'm not taking the leap that some others are and they're blaming Facebook or they're blaming Instagram for this because how are they responsible? Police had the evidence, Facebook said they were working with police, but I do believe that stories like this are going to be part of our new normal. And the last thing I wanna to say to both people and news agencies is, is can we at least try and be reasonable? I was flipping through the news networks yesterday and I stumbled across CNN seemingly setting up the base of an argument that it's entertainment and video games to blame. Uh, there is a uh, element of this that makes it look like a video game because it's a, if you think about video games, they're first person shooters. People in a game, they're having a controller, the gun is in front of them and they're firing. That is how a lot of young people experience weapons. They experience guns as video games. Unfortunately, a video like this it has that same perspective and how yet it is so real. I understand that information comes in at a pretty slow pace and you have to fill in time, but how does, even if you're not saying that they're gonna make the argument, how does comparing a man being shot in the face point blank, what benefit to the conversation do we provide by comparing it to a video game? It sounds like you're trying to either fill time or plant the seeds for a ridiculous blame game. Can we at least arrest or kill the guy responsible for this crime before we start pushing a agendas. Can we do that? Because that would be so refreshing. And I think the final note I want to end this story on is, is you never know what's going to happen in life. Love who you got, why you got them as much as you can, because one day you might not. You never know what's going to happen in this increasingly crazy and unforgiving world. And that's the note I want to end on. And remember, if you like today's video, you like what I try and do with this channel, hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Also, if you missed and want to watch the last Philip DeFranco show, you can click or tap right there. If you want to see today's brand new behind the scenes vlog, click or tap right there. But that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces and I'll see you tomorrow.